snow is becoming increasingly more rare due to global warming. So instead of traveling somewhere, the I decided to make some snow in Blender. So let's get started and let's get into it. In this video, we'll be covering the following topics. Setting up your Blender scene for creating a displacement shader. Large scale displacement, small scale displacement, subsurface scattering, roughness. Let's open up a new window by dragging a new window in here. And with this new window open, I'm going to hit numpad one to go into front view and then hit control alt numpad zero to link my camera to my current view. Let's delete our cube here. So X and delete and shift a add in a UV sphere. Now let's hit control two to add in a subdivision surface with two levels. And we'll get back to that later. Now right click it and shade smooth, add in a sky texture, which is not working because we are in EV. So make sure to switch to the cycles render engine. Now for a very important note, make sure to switch this to experimental feature set and choose either CPU or GPU, depending on your computer. Hop on over to the left and go into render view with Z. Go to the world settings, change the air to 0.3 and the ozone to three to get a nice blue look. I'm going to change the sun rotation to negative 430. Take our default light here, drag it down in our scene. And let's make sure we pull it close to our sphere here. So we get some rim light on this edge as well. I am going to to change it into a area light, which I'm going to point by holding and dragging this yellow dot. I'm going to change the strength to 750 and we're all good to go. Now let's hop on back over to our modifier here and you will see that since we enabled the experimental feature set, we now have this button called adaptive subdivision. Make sure to check it. Change the Dyson skill to a number that works for you. I'm going to leave it at one, um, but you can go lower if your computer can handle it or higher if it doesn't handle it. Change our window here to a shader editor. Now let's add in a new material. Give it a name. I'm going to call mine Patreon. Just putting it out there. If you don't want to make this material yourself, feel free to join the Patreon and download the project file as well as all the other project files I've done before. We're going to start off by working on the displacement and we're going to do that by adding in a noise texture. Let's take our factor here and let's plug it into a displacement node. Plug it into the height. Now take this and plug it into the displacement and you will see something is happening on the left side here. Now this is not actual displacement. This is basically just bump and that has to do with the material settings. So if we go into the materials tab here on the right side, scroll down into the settings, we can go over here and change this from bump only to displacement and bump. And now you will see we actually get some deformation on our geometry. I am going to change a few parameters on this noise texture because this is a lot of displacement and I want less. So I'm going to go for something like a one and leave everything as default. Now I might change the overall scale of the displacement to something like 0.7 or so. Now I'm going to hit control T with the noise texture select. This is a node wrangler add on feature. So make sure you have that enabled and I'm going to change the texture coordinate to object. Now let's duplicate our noise texture texture and duplicate our displacement and take our mapping and plug it into the factor of our noise texture. Let's take our factor and plug it into the height again. Let's plug this into the displacement. Now we get exactly the same results, which makes sense because we are inputting the same data. Uh, and instead, I'm going to change the skill here. So I'm going to go for something like 80 or so. And I'm going to take the detail down to zero and the roughness down to zero. And um, it looks like, I don't know, like a sea urchin or something, um, but we can decrease the skill here. So in the displacement, I'm going to change the skill to something like a 0.1 for now and let's see how that looks okay so this basically sort of looks like a plaster you know like a rough plaster wall in essence this is what we want but the overall shape which is the large skill displacement if you will has not been added in this case so we only have the small scale displacement and we see that the total shader is still looking like an exact sphere so we need a way to combine this now if i control shift and click on this displacement node up here we get to see the actual viewer node output of this so the surface output and you will see that the displacement node outputs a color range and this color drives the displacement. If I do this for this one, you will see we get something similar, but just way more speckled because we have a lot bigger or actually a lot smaller scale. So how can we actually do something with this? I'm going to re-enable the principal PSTF shader by control shift clicking it. And since both our displacement nodes have a color output, usually we just use a mix RGB node to mix in the RGB values. I'm going to take this displacement and this displacement, plug it into the mix RGB node and plug it into the displacement. This did something. However, it sort of mixed the two together. So this is one, this is the other, and the middle ground, so 0.5, is exactly halfway to both of these. But I don't want that. I want them added together. So instead of mix, we're going to choose the add blending mode. And now we get both the displacement on one side, so the large scale displacement, and also the small scale displacement on the other side. All right, so that's actually all the displacement we need to do. Next up, we want to cover the subsurface scattering. And you might wonder, okay, so why 
subsurface? Why not something like transmission or something? Well, transmission, I guess, sort of works, but ice is just basically a solid made of water. Um, it is sort of see-through, but it also is not a perfect material. So that's why the light bounces inside of ice and creating this bluish or this subsurface look. So if we now enable the subsurface and set it to one, you'll see the entire shader immediately starts looking completely different. Most of all, it sort of looks kind of nasty right now because the inside is pinkish. And that's because the basic setup for the subsurface is set for a skin shader. So we are going to change the color and let me first change the overall subsurface color. So let's go over to RGB and we're going to use an RGB value of 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6. Now this will give you a very light gray, nearly bluish tint, perfect for snow. And we're going to do the same with the subsurface radius. So this radius is basically an RGB slider as well. So this is red, this is green, and the other one is blue. So we're going to copy the same color here. So 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6. And you will see, boom, this is starting to look like snow. Let me just zoom in a little bit. I think this is looking already like snow a lot. And I really like how this looks. So, so I might take the scale down slightly to something like a 60 or so. I think it looks slightly more natural to have a bit more contrast in the scale there and sort of larger chunks as well. All right. So subsurface scattering works perfect. The final thing is though that we need roughness and it's now just the basic 0.5 roughness. And if I set it all the way to one, you will see it's completely rough. And I guess that sort of works for snow, but also there's this glint. And if I set it all the way to zero, you don't really see a difference. And that's because it's now completely reflective, um, but the subsurface is sort of overtaking the shine as well. So what we want to do is actually create some sort of highlight. And we have this noise texture over here and we have the factor output here. So if I take a color ramp, set it over there and take this factor and plug it into the color ramp and then preview the color ramp, you will see this is the output of our noise texture. So basically our height map. And we can crank in these values and make sure we are starting to get a lot more reflectiveness with these dots. However, um, first of all, the reflective parts, which are the black parts, are all on the inside right now and the highlights are on the outside but they are non-reflective so we need to flip these colors so i'm going to take it over here and go over something like this might just drag this in a little bit go over something like that and the other thing is that the white parts which are now non-reflective need to be slightly reflective as well because snow is basically still ice so i'm going to take this white color and make it mid gray which will give it some reflection as well all right so with this done, we can now re-enable our principled BSDF shader and we can take the color and plug it into the roughness here. And now what we should get is we should get some of these highlights popping up here. You see them over there, just in between all of these sort of ice particles that we created and they will highlight and sparkle just like actual snow will. Also, uh, I think the displacement for the small scale displacement is, might be a bit too strong. So I'm going to go for 0 0.05, 0 0.06. Let me try 0 0.06 first. Yeah, okay. I think this is better. So we now get a bit more reflection because the depth of the displacement is less. So there's more light catching in between. Um, and I think this is looking, well, this is looking like an actual snowball to me. I mean, yeah, there it is. All right. So this is the snow shader all done. Pause the video here if you want a complete overview of the node setup. So this is the entire shader. Super simple. I hope you enjoyed the video uh, and if you did then please leave a like and subscribe. I want to thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Thanks to the following patrons for supporting the channel. Please consider becoming a patron yourself.